Welcome to another episode of the Bug Bite, hosted by yours truly, Tech Coach Ralph, where we are engineered to win. In today's episode of the Bug Bite, we are going to revisit once again 23 and me. They are being brought back to the front of the congregation to see what exactly is going on over there. So, just a little bit over a month ago, we reviewed 23andMe's data breach due to credential stuffing. But this week, they are back in the news again for a, is it another data breach or is it the same one, but a lot more worse than we originally thought? Well, we're going to find out. So let's just jump right into the article. All right. So today's article is brought to us by wired.com and it was published on December 5th, 2023 at 6.54 p.m. So let's take a look. So the title of the article is The 23andMe Data Breach Keeps Spiraling. 23andMe has provided more information about the scope and scale of its recent breach, but with these details come out more unanswered questions. So let's get into it. More details are emerging about a data breach the genetic testing company 23andMe first reported in October. Hmm, so this seems like it's the same one we spoke about last month where they claimed that it was due to credential stuffing. But as the company shares more information, the situation is becoming even murkier and creating greater uncertainty for users attempting to understand the fallout. 23andMe said at the beginning of October that attackers had infiltrated some of its users' accounts and piggybacked off of this access to scrape personal data from a larger subset of users through the company's opt-in social sharing service known as DNA Relatives. At the time, the company didn't indicate how many users had been impacted, but hackers had already begun selling data on criminal forums that seemed to be taken from at least a million 23andMe users, if not more. In a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filing on Friday, the company said that the threat actor was able to access a very small percentage, 0.1% of user accounts, or roughly 14,000 given the company's recent estimate that it has more than 14 million customers. So in the filing with the Security Exchange, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, they said that it was 0.1%. So we can estimate that it's about 14,000 based on their, um, based on they have about 14 million customers, right? So 14,000 is a lot of people in itself, but the number didn't account for the users impacted by the attackers data scraping from DNA relatives. The SEC filing simply noted that the incident involved a significant number of files containing profile information about other users' ancestry, right? So it seems like, because I, I do not have a 23andMe account. I am not just going to volunteer my DNA to some database on the internet. You know, like the police, they need a warrant to get it, but we're just giving it away to 23andMe and other companies uh, of the source, right? So, and, and that's why it says here, the SEC filing noted that the incident also involved a significant number of files containing profile information about other user ancestors, right? So who you're connected to and things like that. On Monday, 23andMe confirmed to TechCrunch that the attackers collected the personal data of about 5.5 million people who opted into the DNA relatives as well as information from an additional 1.4 million DNA relatives who had their family tree profile information accessed. We're getting into cybersecurity week next week, and this is what we're dealing with right now. 23andMe subsequently shared this expanded information with Wired as well, right? With Wired.com as well, the website that we're reading from right now. From the group of 5.5 million people, hackers stole display names, most recent login, relationship labels, predicted relationships, and percentage of DNA shared with DNA relative matches. In some cases, this group also had other data compromised, including ancestry reports and details about where on their chromosomes they and their relatives had matching DNA, self-reported locations, ancestor birth locations, family names, profile pictures, 
birth years, link to self-created family trees, and other profile information. Oh my goodness. And because like with all this information, you can like there is some strong social engineering that can be at work because people use family names, they use birth years, all this type of stuff into passwords and stuff like that, right? Oh, Jesus Christ. The smaller but still massive subset of 1.4 million impacted DNA relative users all had data compromised from the aforementioned specific profile known as family tree. The stolen data includes display names and relationship labels, and in some cases, birth years and self-reported location data. So now they also know where you are. Okay. Asked why this expanded information wasn't in the SEC filing, 23andMe spokesperson Katie Watson tells Wired that we are only elaborating on the information included in the SEC filing by providing more specific numbers. So why didn't we provide this, these, this information specifically to the SEC, right? That, that's what we want to know. Oh, well, that's what the, the 23andMe users want to know. See, I want to know out of curiosity, as uh, out of being in tech, out of being a Q engineer, so I can help you guys fortify and be more secure in your practices, right? So 23andMe has maintained that attackers use a technique known as credential stuffing to compromise the 14,000 user accounts, finding instances where leaked login credentials from other services were reused on 23andMe. In the wake of the incident, the company forced all of its users to reset their passwords and began requiring two-factor authentication for all customers. Why wasn't this forced upon customers a long time ago, right? That's that's a good question to ask because why do we always have to wait till something goes wrong, right? Like it's like, oh, I I did um I didn't want an alarm system, but then once you get robbed at gunpoint and home invasion stuff, now you want to go take self defense. Now you want to go learn how to use a firearm. Now you want to put a, an alarm system in your house, right? We have to be proactive, all right? In the weeks after 23andMe initially disclosed, disclosed its breach, other, other similar services, including Ancestry and MyHeritage, also began promoting or requiring two-factor authentication on their accounts. Don't promote it, just require it, all right? In October, and again this week through Wired, pressed 23andMe on its finding that user account compromises were attributable solely to the credential stuffing attack. The company has repeatedly declined to comment. Of course they have, right? Because if they if they substantiate that and then tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, new data comes out saying that, oh no, it is not only due to attribute to credential stuffing. There are other things. Now you put yourself liable, so they have to keep quiet. The company has repeatedly declined to comment, but multiple users have no have noted that they are certain their 23andMe account usernames and passwords were unique and could not have been exposed somewhere else in another leak. So now the users are saying, you know, they're saying it's credential stuffing only, but, you know, they're not confirming. But I know that my password was different, was not used anywhere else, and I have still been affected, all right? In at least one example, though, 23andMe eventually provided an explanation to the user. On Tuesday, U.S. National Security Agency Cybersecurity Director Rob Joyce noted on his personal ex, formerly Twitter, do we still need to say formerly Twitter? Like, do we not just know that it's X by now? Come on, guys. Right? Formerly Twitter account. They disclosed the credential stuffing attacks, but they don't say how the accounts were, t were targeted for stuffing. This was unique and not an account that could be scraped from the web or other sites. Joyce wrote, they, Joyce wrote that he creates a unique email address for each company he uses to make an account. That account is used nowhere else, and it was unsuccessfully stuffed. He wrote, adding, personal opinion, 23andMe hack was still worse than they are owning with the new announcement. Hours after Joyce publicly raised these concerns and Wired asked 23andMe about his case, Joyce said that the company had contacted him to determine what had happened with his account. Joyce did use a unique email address for his 23andMe account, but the company partnered with MyHeritage in 2014 and 2015 to enhance the DNA relatives family tree functionality, which Joyce says he subsequently used. Then, separately, MyHeritage suffered a data breach in 2018 in which Joyce unique, Joyce's unique 23andMe email address was apparently exposed. He adds that because of using strong, unique passwords on both his MyHeritage and 23andMe account, neither was, neither was ever successfully compromised by attackers. 
All right, so, well, we can see that this guy, uh, especially with the position that he held, is very, very secure. So we should strive to be like Mr. Joyce, all right? The antidote underscores the stakes of user data sharing between companies and software features that promote social sharing when the information involved is deeply personal and relates directly to identity. It may be that the larger number of impacted users were not in the SEC report because 23andMe, like many companies that have suffered security breaches, does not want to include scraped data in the category of breach data. These delineations, though, ultimately make it difficult for users to grasp the scale and impact of security incidents. I firmly believe that cyber insecurity is fundamentally a policy problem, says Brett Callow, a threat analyst at the security firm MCSoft. We need a standardized and uniform disclosure and reporting laws, prescribed language for those disclosures and reports, regulations and licensing of negotiators. Far too much happens in the shadows or is obfuscated by weasel words. It's counterproductive and helps only the cyber, cyber criminals. Well, I would also pose, right? Let, let the companies um, decide how they're going to do it. And as consumers, we have to be wise enough. We have to be smart enough to ask the right questions, right? We have to ask the right questions and we have to, um, we have to be smart with it where we're putting our information. You know, we don't just want to throw it out there to anybody. But I do think that like when you, when you start adding these laws and regulations and stuff like that, it's being done by people who don't know what they're talking about, who are like 50 years behind the times of technology. So they're always playing catch up. They're also, they're always being retroactive and it, it, it ends up hurting us more than, so like we, we have to, we have to, um, Put our money where our mouths and where our security is, all right? Meanwhile, apparent 23andMe user Kendra Fee flagged on Tuesday that 23andMe is notifying customers about changes to its term of services related to dispute resolutions and arbitration. The company says that the changes will encourage a prompt resolution of any dispute and streamline arbitration uh, proceedings where multiple similar claims are filed. Users can opt out of the new terms by notifying the company that they decline within 30 days of receiving notice of the change. All right. And yep, so this article was actually updated 10.35 p.m. on December 5th, 2023, to include new information about the NSA cybersecurity director, Rob Joyce's 23andMe account and the broader implications of his experience. So that is the article where we are revisiting what we spoke about last month, a little bit over a month ago, right? About the 23andMe de- a hack or security breach due to credential stuffing. At least that's what they're claiming, right? But, you know, it, they're, they're only going to let out as little as possible to make it through. So, I don't know. Let me know. What do you think? Are you going to continue using 23andMe? Is your data already breached? Or you're like, eh, what the heck? Or... Is your data not important to you? Or are you going to say, nope, I, I never signed up for 23andMe? Or does that make you reconsider and you're going to cancel your account and you are going to be more private? You're not going to share your DNA with everyone in the world, including including the hackers who got into the 23andMe systems due to credential stuffing. So let me know what you think, right? So if you enjoyed this video and you found it informative and entertaining and helpful, right? Let me know. Leave me a comment, like the video, share the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every time that we go live, every time that we release a new video, especially these videos of the bug bite, which is helping you to stay secure, helping you to be safe in everything that you do. So let me know. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the bug bite. I am your humble host, Tech Coach Ralph, and we, as always, are engineers to win. But until next time, friends, family, everyone else. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.